I want to cement your understanding of Roman concrete. It's going to be a key element in that aggregate mix that is Roman architecture. And when we look at Roman concrete, it is a mix of, well, literally aggregate and cement. The aggregate are the chunks, the rocks, in this case, the brick, sometimes tufa, volcanic stone, sometimes pumice, a number of different materials that they mix in. But the cement is kind of the important part. And the Roman method of working with concrete is different from what we use today. They will frequently build walls and then infill them with concrete and rubble. And this makes for something that is very inexpensive, very easy to work with, and very fast. Now, Roman concrete uses a mix of volcanic ash and lime to bind rock fragments. In fact, it's basically a mortar, something very similar to what the Greeks or the Etruscans would have had, but they have this area in central Italy that is very volcanic, and they discover that adding the volcanic ash from this area to their mix makes it very, very strong. And that's kind of the missing ingredient. When you read about, hey, you know, there's this missing ingredient from Roman concrete we don't know about it today, that is generally accepted as the missing ingredient. And then, of course, you add gravel and sand and other things to make your concrete. Why use it? Well, a number of different reasons. First of all, concrete is plastic. And this is plastic in the classic sense, not in the 21st century sort of sense. It means it's easily shaped or molded. Anything that I can create a mold out of, I can shape concrete around. And so we see, for example, these coffers in an arch in Rome. And this is really useful because the Romans are going to be using the arch. They're going to be using barrel vaults, groin vaults, and domes. And those are made far easier through the use of concrete. It's also fairly inexpensive. Compared to cut stone, really the Greek method of construction, it is far cheaper. And the idea of just using brick, well, that gets really expensive because you have to run multiple courses for something that is very wide. It's also fairly impractical. So it becomes the inexpensive option, which as you know, in the world that we live in, well, if it's more inexpensive, more people will use it. It's also particularly quick, same reason we use it today. And again, here's a diagram. The Roman method is very, very similar to the American method that we use today. They're creating a mold in this case. In the Roman case, they're using bricks to create that mold. But in the US, we would use plywood uh, or foam or something like that to build that mold. And as soon as it cures, you can go ahead, remove the mold and move on to the next part of the building. It goes up far faster and it's far more efficient than any other method that's available, especially for massive architecture where wood and other materials might not be appropriate. Now, we always read about Roman concrete being lost. And is it really lost? Well, it's not as such. There are two problems that come into play. First of all, the volcanic ash. After the Romans, no one's really clear on what that quote-unquote secret ingredient is. And the only really volcanic place in Western Europe is in Italy. You don't see a lot of volcanism in France or Germany or England. And so you don't have the same availability of volcanic ash. Second, when Rome falls in 476, you have the medieval period where people will kind of try and use the Roman ruins as necessary, but they're no longer building anything massive and monumental. In fact, there's simply no need for concrete. They're using brick, they're using mud brick in some cases, they're using wood, but they're simply not rebuilding something big enough to require concrete. And by the time they are, the Gothic period, that recipe, those secrets, are very much lost, which is why when you get to the Gothic and the Romanesque, these churches are made of stone. They're not made of concrete. One other thing the Romans do frequently with concrete that I should point out is they face it. They will veneer it with marble. And that's what we see at the Colosseum and elsewhere. 
It looks really good. It looks like it's marble or stone, but it's really not. It's brick and concrete, and then the marble is laid over the surface. 